This program, I did it, you know, with all my heart, and I, and I meant it from the bottom of my heart, so it's a guy like that. Tom, Tom, I want to go back to Moneyball with you. We talked about this moment. We talked about this be your last year, and you were emotional at Moneyball. Yeah. But if I had told you you would be playing for a Big Ten title on that day, I don't even think you would have even thought that big. So for you, does that make the day, if it's possible, even more special? Yeah, it does. And, and you know, it's, it's beautiful because, you know, I know it's a part of God's plan, you know, for my life because I couldn't write it. You know, I, could, I couldn't write this, you know, especially, you know, it being senior night opportunity that we have. It's, it's so special, but I'm, I'm thankful just to be a part of, you know, a program that gives me opportunities like this. Have you played that, that vision out in your mind where you've seen <laughs> other seniors kiss that? Uh... Yeah, mid yeah, I've been I've been playing it all since I was a freshman. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I have. You like, know, it, it was one day that I, I was like, "Man, I I want to get to that day, but I love it here so much that you, you know it's kind of like I don't want to get there. But you know, now that it's finally here, it's like, I mean, I I, I can't even explain the emotions that's going through me. You know, I was walking, I was going to class this morning, and I just was walking past the bridge, and I was looking like, man, you know, four years. It came by so fast, but I'm. You know, so when like, you say planning out, you plan out the kiss. Like I mean, you, you practice the kiss on. No, I ain't, I ain't practice it. I mean, <laughs> I, I envision myself doing it. <laughs> I ain't practice it. Tom, yeah. Miles, uh, Cassius, Joshua, uh, several of the Ben Carter. Have these guys have all mentioned what you've meant to them in recruiting? Even several of the next year's class that you're not going to play with talked about you being their recruiter. Clearly, that's a gift that, that you have in your life. Is coaching something you would ever consider? Is it something that you would like to do? Oh, yeah, I, d I definitely think I want to coach one day if it's God's will for my life. Um, you know, wherever he takes me is what I want to do the most. So, but, you know, I definitely love the game. I would love to be around the game for as long as I possibly can. With Izzo talking about what you've meant to him in this program, would, would that be a dream one day to come back as a GA and maybe start your coaching career here? Definitely, definitely. Like I said, if it's, if it's God's will for my life and, you know, no better place in the country than to be here. You, you played in the Final Four in your freshman year, but no Big Ten championships in that yeah. stretch. What does what does that part of this mean to you that this could be locked up here in the next couple of days? Uh, it's, it's special, man. You know, just to just to have this opportunity. Um, you know, that's one of my goals in college is to win the Big Ten, uh, you know, championship outright. And um, you know, it's finally here, so you just want to embrace the moment and don't take it for granted. Tom, all the hours you've spent in this facility and the floor at the Breslin has it kind of hit you yet that tomorrow is the final game? Yeah, yeah, it, it I mean, I'm, try, I'm trying not to get emotional because, you know, I mean, it is what it is, man. But, I mean, I love this place, man. If you, you guys know that. You've been, you see me play for four years now, you know, everything this program, you know, means to me in my life, what it's done for me, you know, everything the coaches and my teammates have done for me over the past four years. It's just something that, you know, growing up in the Bahamas, man, you can never, ever dream about it for it to actually be happening. You know, just, you know, I can't thank God enough for everything I've been able to do at Michigan State. Tom, what you've is gone it? through uh, the recruiting process of other guys, because that's one of the things that people have talked about with you. Is you've gotten in and kind of sold this program to the other guys. Well, I just, you know, be honest with them and, and tell them about what we really do at Michigan State. It's a family above everything. And that's one of the biggest reasons why I came here. So, you know, you gotta you gotta let guys know the truth about you know how it is, and that we really care about you as a person. You know, not just as a basketball player. And I, you know, I think, you know, when they come here, they just, I spend a lot of one on one time with them, and just, you know, I be honest with them about everything, about who I am, and and how I can help them in, in any area of their life that they need help in. Tom, what has this program taught you? Critics, particularly with with Tom Izzo in the program right now. I mean, how does that make you feel? I mean. This is a family, and I, and I love Coach Izzo, and I know, and I know who he is, and I respect him, everything about him, and I love him. Your your class that came in with Javon and Marvin too. Um, I mean, I guess I mean they would have obviously been here with you. Yeah. Was that hard when they left? I know you're very close to them, and, and just not having them here. Yeah, it was hard when they left. Was, you know, I got a tattoo on my my left leg that I got with Marvin and JB, same same exact spot. It's not their names, is it? No, <laughs> no. It says it says it says three each. Um, you know those guys are really special to me. You know we're in the same high school as Mark, played on the same AU team with him. And, you know JB, I talked to him a lot. You know when we were both committed in high school, and I actually played in the tournament. 
with him, I think, down in Ohio where I got the meeting before we came to college. So, you know, I talked to those guys a lot, and, you know, I wish they could be here, but, you know, we all have different paths. What's your proudest moment to this point? Uh, proudest moment? I mean, I, the best experience I had since I've been here is, you know, winning that game in the Elite Eight to go to a Final Four and then actually being at the Final Four, you know, you come from, you know, where I'm coming from, being in the Bahamas, uh, to playing in front of 70,000 people and starting as a freshman is just something that you can never, ever write down. So You talked about holding people accountable. Has your role has changed and Cassius has come for it. Like, how have you continued to try to do that? I just continue to be myself. Um, I don't think I've changed one bit. Um, just continue to lead, lead by example. Um, tell guys what they need to hear, you know, when they need to hear it. Um, what I can see from when I'm on the floor, when I'm on the bench, it don't matter. I mean, I continue to be the time I've been since I first came here. Doug Herner said he would have retired a couple of years ago or <laughs> left completely if it wasn't for you. What, what the, the impact you've had on culturally on those guys like him, and even Coach Izzo and the staff, what, can you kind of put that into words and how those relationships have? Uh, you know, I never knew that I would have that impact, you know, for, for Herner to say that. I never knew that I... I would be lying if I said I knew that I would be able to inspire people the way I have since I've been in Michigan State, you know, and I don't want to say that I, I knew I was going to do that, but just to, to hear people talk about me the way they do and, you know, it's just, you know, it makes me think about my mom a lot and my dad a lot and just where I came from and, you know, to know that, you know, my mom always told me that, you know, manners and respect will take you further than any sport to take you and to know that I, I stuck with what I learned when, when I was growing up as a kid and for people to, to say things like that is just a blessing. Have uh, uh, anybody been joking with um, Miles or Jaron that it's their last game too? <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't. They've just been really talking about about me, to be honest. Both Miles and Jaron, everybody really just talk. You know, they're giving me uh, crap about how I'm going to be emotional the whole week, crying mm -hmm. in practice, crying. But, hey, <laughs> they were right. <laughs> Miles said you've been counting down for months. Day, I've been really counting down for years now, <laughs> <laughs> not in a bad way, just the way that you know, you know, it was it was coming to an end, and we still got a lot of basketball left. That's the beauty in this whole thing. So they're right. You have been crying in practice. What's that? So you said they're right. You have been emotional in practice. Yeah, that? I have. I, I've cried. I've cried in practice a lot of times, just for the mere fact that I'm, you know, I can play basketball. But then this year, I think the first practice I was crying, and then. You know, sometimes I just look around and, you know, just be appreciative, thankful to God that I'm able to play the game. And I'll share a few tears. But this morning I, I was walking and I, I got to tell you, I just walking past the press and just, you know, all the memories, you know, playing in this in this gym, you know, more than 70 times and all that kind of stuff will run through your head. What do you want to do after Thanks, basketball? Man. Uh, I want to, man, to be honest, the biggest thing I want to do personally is being, you know, God's will for my life, whatever that may be. I want to play basketball for as long as I possibly can, but I also want to help as many people as I possibly can in my time here on earth.